It's William and Robin with the Riverstone Life. And yes, people suck. They do suck. Yes, they do. Now, if you clicked on this because of the thumbnail, yes, that picture is Robin pissed off. And that other picture is a police officer next to me. So we'll tell you that story, but we're going to tell you another story first. Right, Robin? Mm -hmm. How many years ago was that? Four. Four years ago? Because back when I first met you, I, I, I'm one of those people that just leave everything in my vehicle. I'm very trustworthy, am I? You are. Yeah, I'm very trustworthy. I trust I people. I am not. Robin's not. I'm this far this way, she's that far that way, and in the middle we try to balance out, right? Sometimes. Robin trusts nobody and I trust everybody. And so we, we try to find a happy medium, right? <laughs> well, we went to, where did we go? We were on our way to, oh, we were on our way to Elvis Press to see Graceland, right? Yes, we were. And we were in Kansas somewhere, weren't we? And we went and stayed in this hotel yes. and woke up the next morning, come out to check the car and Robin's Mercedes. This car was absolutely gorgeous. It only had like 3,000 miles on it. Somebody decided to bust out the driver window and the passion. Um, Let's back up okay. to that story. Okay. We get into our hotel parking lot. Yeah. It was our first night on our two week vacation. Holiday. holiday. Call she it. calls it holiday. I call it vacation. <laughs> so European, but yep. you know. Yep. Anyway, so we're on day one, night one yep. of our Kansas first stop. Yep. And me, I don't travel light. No, she does not. So I had a lot of stuff in the back of that. And one second. She's came a long way in the last four years. Oh, thanks. Yes. Got you. So we're pulling in and we're getting ready to go into the hotel. And I said, I still have more stuff. And you're like, ah, it's fine, don't worry about it. And I'm like, I still have more stuff. We should go and get, we should, you know, do a second trip. And you're like, nah, we're gonna leave in the morning, it's not a big deal. Now, well, granted, my Mercedes had tinted windows. Very tinted. Very tinted. You couldn't see anything in this vehicle. So you couldn't see, and that was your logic. You're not gonna be able to see anything anyway, it's fine, don't worry about it. So I'm like, all right, whatever. And this was just a, a C-Class 300. This is not no super no. expensive Mercedes. It, but it was mine. It I was yours. It. it was a nice car. I got yes. a great deal on it. Nothing anyway, spectacular. So we go into the hotel. We put our stuff away. There's a restaurant attached to it. We went and ate dinner. And after our dinner was done, we went to bed. The next morning, we get up. You go out because you like to take stuff out while I'm getting ready. That's just our routine. Because I can have the whole car loaded up by the time she's done. <laughs> I'm done. I'm not a morning, morning, morning person. Especially on holiday. Yeah. So you go out the parking lot and what do you find both windows are just smashed which destroyed. windows are smashed your side both of them yes. both of them my side is smashed yeah. not just not just cracked oh, but literally a gazillion pieces of i never yeah. ever seen that much little itty bitty pieces of glass before in my whole entire life they literally went through this car they took robin robin's has a lot of shoes and she brings a lot of stuff with us because she likes to dress up and go places and do things around mm -hmm. holiday they took all of her shoes. Yes. Some, of the, some of the stuff you had for like 20 years. Yes. Because she keeps, has everything she's ever purchased when it comes to clothing. When so. I love it, yes. Yep. It stays it. with me. If I don't yep. love it, it goes away. But the moral of the story is all of my belongings, everything that I had that was mine was stolen. Your stuff stayed, and I'm still living to that. <laughs> That's because back then I wore Walmart, Walmart clothes. Nobody steals Walmart no, clothes. No, no. You had hats. You had sweatshirts. Yeah. You had belongings in that bag. They took all her stuff. They took everything of mine. They even took a everything. pair of cowboy boots that we could, it took us two and a half years to find to replace them. Everything of mine. Yeah. So everything. Everything of yours. And then we had, then we couldn't get, this was back when COVID times, so and there was no rental cars. They were all out of rental cars. No. So I couldn't, what I ended up doing is I ended up duct taping everything up. We well, found, first of all, we called the police yeah, and they sure. couldn't do anything. So sure. that was a lost cause. A then we tried calling places to get the windows replaced because we were day one, well, technically day two, because it happened the next day of our two week vacation. She was ready to just go back and be done. I don't do things that way. I don't I don't let people stop me from doing anything. No, I was frustrated because I knew we should have taken that stuff. <laughs> well, I'm a duct tape guy. I got duct tape in all my vehicles. I duct tape all the windows. Robin finds one window a uh, hundred well, miles no, away. Go back, go back. We tried looking for windows, replacements, and nobody had them. 
because but, it was. But you found one in another town, like a hundred miles away. Just a hundred. Yeah, so I duct taped them all up. So, so we're in the vehicle. Your side is completely tinted, and you're great. My side is blind me. Because... Well, not at this time. At this time, you just got duct tape. Well, I so know. you're all blacked out. Anyways, we get to the first place. We're there for like four hours. We get a window put in. Then we had to drive to Memphis to get to the next window. So I, we got one duct tape, one window. Now your window's all and then white. You're here. Yeah. The so we get to Memphis. We finally stay in a hotel. You know, you're, you're worried you can't. Like, now we now we leave nothing in our vehicles. Everything's locked. Oh, um, right? Yeah. Because you don't want any of your stuff stolen. Because well, I learned my lesson on your shit. On my stuff, yeah. <laughs> but anyways, we get to Memphis. We get the windows <laughs> fixed. And now she's got two new windows, but they're this is black on this side. This is the sun's beating there. So I'm gonna go sunburn. While so you're all Robin's driving me crazy about this. I get on Facebook. I find some kid on Facebook. I don't know he's a young kid at this time. I'm like, dude, can you tint these windows? He's like, bring them by the shop. We'll tint them. And the kid, I get there. The kid's 14 years old. <laughs> this he, is dad's shop. He does these windows in like 20 minutes, both of them better than the ones that were done on the other side <laughs> for half the money. I ended up giving him a hundred dollar bill because I was so <laughs> impressed. <laughs> His dad come over, shook my hand. They were just great people. So people suck. The guy, the people that broke into our car, but then there's always somebody like that, that you meet. And that's why I'm so trustworthy and everything. I got those windows fixed. They, they helped us out. We went on our vacation. It was a spectacular vacation and it was great, right? But this is what you deal with. So now I keep everything locked up. This truck, everything's locked up. At least I thought everything was locked up. I thought everything was secure. I lug all these bags in every time we stay in a hotel. And, and I do too. And we did. So <laughs> what happened, Robin? <sighs> well. We didn't even know. I get up, I get the vehicle all loaded. Yeah. I got the truck running, it started. You know, it's warming up and everything. I don't think nothing of it. Um, this guy in this, there's a semi parked really close to me. Anyways, he comes out and I mean, he's just acted weird around me and I'm used to people doing that sometimes, but he gets in his truck, gets a, hardly even gets his truck warmed up and he's gone. I think nothing of it. We get all loaded up and everything. The truck shuts off after 30 minutes. I don't think nothing of it. We get, we even got breakfast in this place. It was yes, a great we stayed morning. at a hotel the night you before. You bragged about how nice this hotel was. Yes. Robin got it for like what? 50, 60 bucks? I don't yeah, know. It was, it was great. It was great. But it was a perfect night. Everything was perfect. We get in the vehicle, we start driving down the road, and I don't think we go maybe, oh, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. My fuel gauge is on and everything. Everything says you're out of fuel. Well, I never checked, I never even looked at the fuel in the morning because we filled up the night before. The night before, we were fully loaded. And the, street, the other <laughs> tank was full, it was shut off and everything, and this one was full. So I thought nothing of it. I'm going, there's no way we can be out of fuel. I just filled this 200 bucks, everything's full. You know, and I'm thinking, Maybe our fuel gauge is not working. Correct. So re maybe there's sensor gauge something. Yeah, we start searching things, saying you could have a sensor problem. Pull it over, reset it. I played Never with it. Never in a million years. I told her, don't worry about it. I reset my trip meter all the time. I said we got 40 some miles on this vehicle since we filled it up. We're fine. So we just keep driving and we keep driving, and all of a sudden, the thing's still flashing. I'm going. Maybe we are to fuel, but I know in my mind I got my spare tank back there, so we're okay. It's a gravity feed, so it's really slow. So if you do turn it on, you gotta wait 30 minutes or get out a pump and pump it in there faster. But when you've got it turned on and you're going, it works perfect. I'm not thinking of it. All of a sudden, the truck starts chugging. I'm going, we're out of fuel. <laughs> and I look, and we're on this interstate. There's no fuel stations close. 80 mile an hour. <laughs> and there's this little pullover. There's this little pullover. I'm going. I pull right over there and I get it and I shut it down. And then I'm like, how can we be out of fuel? So at this time, I still don't think what's going on or not thinking of anything. I go to start it and it starts up and runs for a second. I shut it off because I know if I run this out of fuel, um, I've never done it my whole life, but I've had friends and I don't even know where the fuel filter is on this. So I know you got to fill that back up with diesel and it, it's got to prime itself. I don't even, you know, these newer trucks might not need all that, but the older trucks were hard to get started and then you could rain drain down your batteries in my mind i'm thinking oh man this is shit sir. we're in the middle of nowhere in, <laughs> we're Wyoming, in, the middle of Wyoming. in the middle of nowhere well then this police lady pulls up behind me she was super nice i told her what was going on i told her i said I, if, if, if maybe somebody took our fuel because the only thing i'm thinking is we got a fuel leak or somebody took our fuel and i didn't and at this time i'm not putting things and together prior to that we're checking we have an app that tells us everything that's going on with, with this truck. truck everything yep. like everything imaginable and there's nothing on there like, 
well, that's weird. You think if there was a major problem, it would, you know, red flag or ding or send you a text or do something. So it was just baffling. Well, by the time, time the police officers, I've already turned my reserve tank on. So it's, it's, it's trickling in there and everything. And by the time I get done with her, she gives me her car and says, if I need anybody, she'll get me some help out here. And I'm like, you know, I've never in my life had to have a vehicle towed. There's no wood around here, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> but I'm thinking, you know what, we'll, we'll be all right. And then Robin yells to me, she goes, I think the fuel gauge is coming up. And I walk in the truck and you can see a you little, see the blue. little bit yeah. of blue and I'm going, okay. And then Robin goes, well, somebody has stole our fuel. I'm like, well, if they cut the line or something, things would be leaking on the ground. And she goes, well, could they have just opened the door? Is I'm like, door well, locked? wait a minute. This is a hundred thousand dollar truck that has air conditioned seats, heads up display. This thing has everything in the world. It's got to have a locking fuel door. Never in a million years would have think anything. Less. All of our cars have it. Our Jeep. You've never, I've never not had a vehicle that Our thirty-six thousand dollar Jeep has a locking fuel door. I'm going. This thing has a locking fuel door, Robin. I don't need to. And like, I'm not are you about sure? It. Have uh, we ever tested that theory? Because we never thought of it yeah. before. Because we just assumed. Well, don't even, assume. Even our tailgate locks. I mean, I have the bed cover. Everything's locked up. I mean, no issues at all. I'm going well. Maybe it doesn't. So Robin gets out and we, we test it. I mean, I lock everything up. I walk away. She goes over there and she goes, there's no lock on this door. They can open right up. The fuel cap. So if you've got one of these newer trucks. Yes. FYI. Get a locking fuel cap and put on it. You know, I never, and I never even thought of it. Me neither. Never even thought of it. So now we're sitting here thinking and, I, and we start talking back and forth. And as we're doing this, our fuel gauge is going up to almost a half tank. Mm -hmm. I play with the truck. It starts a little hard, but it starts and, it, and it's running. And we got fuel and everything. And I'm looking over here. I go, you know what? I think it was the guy, the trucker next to us that stole our fuel last night. I'm so glad that I didn't have my reserve on because he could have sat there for hours and pumped out all 200 hours worth of fuel. He wouldn't have any. And I would, we'd have been stuck on the side of the road. So, you know, I'm not 100% sure it was the trucker. So if you, at, at that time, they, they look at our vehicles. It says Riverstone Life. They, they, you know, they either did it because we're Riverstone Life, or he had no clue. But if you were the trucker next to us and you come across this video and you stole our fuel, you're a real piece of shit. But you know what? We went on. Our day was great. Our life is great. And you know what? Karma will get you because it always does when you do things like that. In fact, Karma was probably already getting him if he had to steal fuel from us. You know what I mean? So he's probably already getting his karma for all the stuff he's already done and in I life. Believe in karma. And we do too, and that's how we live our life, and that's how we treat people. And if you did not take it, and you just happened to be next to me, and you were in a hurry, then you definitely, I apologize for thinking you did it, but you were acting weird, and that's a red flag to me, and you were really close to our unit with your truck, and your tank was right there, it would have been easy to put a siphoning hose into it, you know what I mean? Correct. Or even an electric pump, you could have pumped this thing out really fast, is what I read online that this is something that happens all the time and maybe you didn't maybe some local kids but local kids usually steal gas not diesel yeah. in my opinion so that's what this video is about we wanted to throw this out there that you know bad things do happen to us but we just overcome them and I have a little angel that I've always on my shoulder like I tell Robin I've been telling it since I met, since you met right I says what's the odds of us being out here with no fuel anywhere but me having my reserve tank full and shut off so I had it for emergency that's just things that was good for us but what was the odds of that parking spot if that spot wouldn't have been there I'd have been on the side of the road with a highway with people going 80 plus miles semis going by and me trying to work on the fuel door on that side well, when I was sitting here we were yeah, shaking, shaking because they were just flying by. And I believe, I mean, that angel can't stop that person from stealing my fuel, but she can help me in every little way and give me every little, you know, that's how I live life. Right. So that's what this video is about, is about, you know, we got taken advantage of again. Thank God that, you know, we have nothing in the truck. We take everything, our cameras, all of our stuff is taken out in the hotels with me. My camera bag has got a $70,000 of stuff and I carry it with me all the time. I never leave it out. And that's because of what happened on our holiday, remember? Yes. So, and our toolboxes are locked, our cover, everything's locked. So, you know, that's the best we can do. But, well, we got, a, lo we got a locking fuel cap that we're picking up in Idaho yes, today. Yes, we are. Lesson learned. Lesson learned. So, if you watch this video, make sure yours is yes. locked up. And if you don't have a GMC, Sierra 3500 HD Denali Duramax. Yeah, I'm sure the Chevys, I'm sure all maybe all these Check diesel trucks are that your way. your fuel door. Yes, because this has been a learning lesson for us. Mm -hmm. and, and hopefully, thank God that I didn't run it out of fuel <laughs> and had to pay $1,000 for a tow truck or, you know, or I have no idea, you know. 
Plus, we have a camper behind us. Yeah, that's not delivered that we wouldn't get paid for. That's yeah, yeah, it could have been way worse. Yeah. Grateful it was just that, but still. So. That's what the video is about, folks. So, you know, all of our videos are usually all positive stuff. And this still turned out positive. Agree? Right? Yes. Right. Could have been worse. So, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. If you like what we're doing on the channel. And share it. Please share yeah. it. Because you just never know. Never know. Because your fuel tank door is not locked. I'm sure somebody out there have a comment say, well, dumbass, didn't you know right. that you didn't have a lock? No, you know, I never even thought of it. Me neither. You know, and, and the reason I didn't think of it is because I just, I like to believe that people are better than they are. Yeah, that's you. Yeah, that's me. And Robin's I just the other. thought that it was a common thing, especially yeah. in the 2023, that it would be locked. I don't know. But, but it, you know, if you like. But I don't think about fuel tank doors on a regular basis. You, don't even think so. you just know that it costs us $125. Uh, yeah, that's all I That's know. coming out of the profit of this deal. So, yeah. yeah. It is what it is. So, if you like the video, subscribe to the channel. Right? Thumbs up. And always. And the reason I say always at the end of our video is because our little thing at the back end of it says thank you for watching. And we didn't want to double the thank you for watching. And I had somebody the other day go, why do you our say daughter. always? Your like, daughter. Why do you That's say always? One. So this one's for you, Kylie. <laughs> always.